Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the microeconomics course. We will solve the problems about short run costs today. Let's look at the exercise two point one. Nicholas has purchased a streaming audio service for eight dollars per month. As he now listens to more songs in a month, he spreads this fixed cost over a larger quantity Q. Derive an algebraic formula for his average fixed cost per song and draw it in a diagram. One of his friends says to Nicholas, "The more music you listen to, the less you pay per song." So you should spend all your time listening to music. What is wrong with this reasoning? His fixed cost is eight dollars per month. The average fixed cost is a divided by Q, where Q is the number of songs he listens to per month. The average fixed cost curve is downward sloping. It is true that. The more music he listens to, the less he pays per song. The eight dollars per month is the fixed cost. The average fixed cost falls as he listens to more songs. However, it does not mean he should spend all his time listening to music, because his optimal consumption bundle of music and other activities. Is subject to a time constraint. He maximizes his utility in an interior solution by dividing his time between listening to music and doing other activities. Let's solve exercise two point two. A firm's short run cost function is as follows. Determine the fixed cost, the average variable cost, the average cost, the marginal cost, and the average fixed cost. A fixed cost is a cost that does not vary with the level of output. It is not a function of Q. A variable cost is the production expense that changes with the quantity of output produced. It is a function of Q. The average variable cost is the variable cost divided by the units of output produced. The average fixed cost is the fixed cost divided by the units of output produced. The average total cost is the total cost divided by the units of output produced. The marginal cost is the change in the cost if one more unit of output is produced. It is the derivative of the total cost with respect to output. Let's try exercise two point three. Give the formulas for and plot average fixed cost. Marginal cost, average variable cost, and average cost. If the cost function is as follows, in part A, the total cost equals ten plus ten times Q. From the total cost function, we can calculate the marginal cost, the average variable cost, the average fixed cost, and the average cost. And we can plot the curves for them. The marginal cost and the average variable cost curves are horizontal line at ten. In this case, the average cost curve is the average fixed cost curve shifting up by the average variable cost. In this case, in part B. The total cost function is C equals ten plus Q squared. From the total cost function, we can calculate the marginal cost 
the average variable cost, the average fixed cost, and the average total cost, and draw the curves for them. The marginal cost curve, MC, cuts the average variable cost curve, AVC, and the average cost curve, AC, at their minimums. The average fixed cost falls as output increases. The marginal cost, the average variable cost, and the average cost curves first fall and then rise. Let's do exercise 2.4. A firm's cost curve is as follows, where B is positive. For work values of B are cost, average cost, and average variable cost positive. We can find the condition under which the average variable cost is positive. Then the average cost will be positive because it is the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. The average fixed cost is always positive. The total cost must be positive once the average cost is positive. In part B, what is the shape of the average cost curve? At what output level is the average cost minimized? The shape of the average cost curve is similar to that of figure 5.1 in the textbook. It is U-shaped. At the point where the marginal cost curve cuts the average cost curve, the average cost is minimized. At this level of output, the marginal cost equals the average cost. In part C, at what output levels does the marginal cost curve close the average cost and the average variable cost curves? The marginal cost curve crosses the average cost curve and the average variable cost curve at their minimums. We have already obtained the output level where the marginal cost curve crosses the average cost curve. It is the output level that minimizes the average cost. We use the same method, that is, to equate the marginal cost with the average variable cost to find the intersection. The output level is B over 2. It is also the lowest point of the average variable cost curve. In part D, we use calculus to show that the marginal cost curve must close the average variable cost curve at its minimum point. For the average variable cost, its first order condition for optimization is the first derivative equals zero. We have Q equals B over two, which is the same as the intersection of the marginal cost and the average 
variable cost curves. We can check the second order condition for a local minimum. The second derivative is positive. So the marginal cost curve crosses the average variable cost curve at its minimum point. Let's find answers to exercise 2.5. A firm builds wooden shipping crates. How does the cost of producing a 1 cubic foot crate compare to the cost of building an 8 cubic foot crate if wood costs $1 per square foot and the firm has no labor or other costs? More generally, how does cost vary with volume? The 1 cubic foot crate uses wooden balls of 1 square foot. The 8 cubic foot crate uses wooden balls of 4 square feet. So for each side, the big one costs 4 times as much as the small one. It is $1 for the small one and $4 for the big one. Using 6 size, the small box costs $6 and the big box costs $24. The volume of the small one is 1 cubic foot and that of the big one is 8 cubic foot. The average cost for the small one is $6 per cubic foot. The average cost for the big one is 24 divided by 8 equals $3 per cubic foot. The average cost decreases as volume increases. Let's solve exercise 2.6. The only variable input a janitorial service firm uses to clean office is workers who are paid a wage of $8 an hour. Each worker can clean four offices in an hour. Use math to determine the variable cost, the average variable cost, and the marginal cost of cleaning one more office. Draw a diagram similar to figure 7.1 to show the variable cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost curves. The variable cost function is equal to 2 times Q, where Q is the number of offices. The average variable cost is $2 per office. The marginal cost of cleaning one more office is also $2. The diagram shows the variable cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost curves. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.